It looks as though we've got good news and we've got bad news. Now the good news is obvious. I got 14 of those 16 little pieces made successfully. Now the bad news is I broke two. Now the good news is we need little pieces to try out the wax pencil on anyway, right? Okay, let's take a break from Photo Edge here for a minute and try and do something else. Okay, now this piece is this piece. And this little piece, R10, is this one right here. Maybe these aren't the right ones to use here. Maybe these ones would work better, I don't know. No. It's got to go like that. I don't want to be doing it with my fingers because I'm planning on putting solvent right there on that piece. Obviously I'm not picking this up right. Maybe I should be using these ones and maybe pick it up like like this. Yeah, that might work better. Put a little bit of an angle like this better. Okay, grab it like this. Put it on here. Okay, we'll give that a try. I think that's it. It's supposed to be so that it's flush right on the bottom here. I think I pretty much got it. You'll notice there's a little notch on the top of this little square box here. Well, it has to go into the little notch that's in the bottom of this. something like that. Okay, try it. You know what, maybe dropping the round piece down onto the base it makes more sense here. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Just sort of doing a dry run here. Okay, so it would go something like this. Yeah, that'll work a lot better. Okay, now we got these little pieces R19 have to go on here. And I think once again I'm going to use this thing here. Now you see a little hole in the bottom of this piece. Well, it's supposed to fit 
in there or something like that. Now I'm hoping that what's going to happen is that the solvent is going to dissolve the plastic so that these pieces will fit a little better together. I probably could have done a better job of clearing up the flashing, but I didn't and it's a little bit too late now I guess. Sort of wiggle it into place there. We'll sort of smoosh the plastic around. At least that's the plan. Seems to be doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's on. I'll just do the same on the other side. Don't want to put too much solvent on because if it runs down, it's going to glue the rubber on the pliers to the plastic, and we don't want that. Okay, now let's take this thing off of there before it's too late. There we go. I think we got it. Looks good to me. Okay, now we've got the platform here, R8. You remember it's the little piece that we uh, held in the clothes peg there, oh, what, three, four episodes ago? And it's going to be kind of hard to show you here, but as near as I can tell, it's supposed to go on right here. This is not going well. I think it's supposed to go in something like this. <laughs> Maybe this is a situation where if the camera was right overhead it might be better. Now I can't pick it up. Okay, I'll hold it like this. I think it's supposed to go in there. That square notch is supposed to fit. Something like that. Now once again, I realize that the solvent will dissolve the plastic and it will make it fit better. I just want to make sure that I'm getting it in the right place. You know, that it's supposed to go like this and uh, not, not have this little round circular thing sitting on top. I don't think that would be right. Yeah, I think it's supposed to go like this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to go. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of solvent on the bottom there. I don't want to be putting it on the top because the, these little holes that you see here, I don't want to accidentally be filling them up. So we'll just get a tiny little bit of solvent. That should do it. If we could enlarge R9 200 times, we might be able to figure out what it is. Anyway, you'll notice on the diagram there that the seat brackets and the seats are in place already. I guess I jumped ahead a bit, but I don't think it's going to be serious. I think we can still get those other parts on okay. Yeah, I guess I should have put them on first.
Okay, I think it's in the holes. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, I can't think of any words right now to describe what's going to happen here. Yep, wish me luck. Hey, wait a minute. I don't believe in luck. I believe in the random number generator. <laughs> That's good. Now, according to the drawing, it's supposed to go something like this. Now, here's a case of where I was thinking that maybe I could use my new wax pencil that I made up. Uh, problem is, what if I don't get it? What if I let go of it and it's not quite right? How do I grab hold of it again? using the waxed tip pencil. Well, it's just not going to work. So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to end up having to use the tweezers here. Now, I think it is supposed to go something like this. Not on top like that, but sort of stuck in the side. Now, one of the viewers was kind enough to send me a link in which I was able to see a drawing of this particular gun. And, uh, you know, when you can see the drawing, you know, you kind of know how the thing's supposed to look. And it's supposed to look something like this. Now, of course, in the drawing, there's a tremendous amount more detail, and then there's photographs as well. That you, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount of fine detail that's missing on this. But, of course, they just couldn't have everything. At least not at 200 scale. Maybe at tenth scale like the uh, Yamoto in Japan. Now here's something else I have to consider. If I mount these seats on here now and while I'm handling this thing in order to get the guns mounted in place here, um, I'm, I'm going to end up bending these things. So I think I better put these on last. Now a bit of a correction here. I just checked the drawing, and you'll notice that that piece that I was calling the tongue, well, that actually sits more or less on top of everything. Now if I was to bend the tongue uh, and angle it like this, well, it would be more accurate, but I had a hard enough time doing it straight. There's only so much I can do. Now I don't know if this is true, but I had heard that if you take an ordinary sewing needle and you file the end off of the eye so it ends up like a little two-pronged fork, that that can be used as an, uh, to uh, apply glue or any kind of liquid uh, to something, just a minute amount. Now this is uh, pretty much the smallest needle I can find. And I'm just going to take the... Uh, uh, you know, like I say, I'm going to just file the end off here. See how it works. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. pretty hard steel, isn't it? I don't think we did anything to the needle. I don't see any marks at all on the end of it. I'll maybe have to grind it. Now a 
it's just going to allow me to put a little tiny minute amount of glue on the top, like right here and right there. Those parts are so small. Maybe this is even too big. I was hoping to do a little bit more here today, but you know, once again, I'm sort of running out of time, and if I want to have this up and posted on YouTube on time tonight, well, I gotta quit right now. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>